do yoga classes. Yeah. <laughs> well, this yin yoga class, it's just perfect for the morning. It's always uh, perfect to do yin yoga in the morning for your fascia. I'm going to get into that later. Um, but you can also do it in the evening to relax more. So either way it works, but for the fascia, really, it's really good to do it in the morning. All right, I just want to start with a short meditation uh, to ground. That's why I chose this root chakra healing music. If you don't have it on, don't worry about it. If you don't like it, don't worry about it as well. <laughs> ah, Eli, uh, you, can, you can turn your... You can turn your phone. This is sideways. Any chance you can turn your phone camera? Yeah, so the other way around. Yes, of course, I can try that. Yeah, let me see. Ah, I thought I should do it like that, but it's different. Mm. Let me see. I'm going to put it on the anatomy book. <laughs> Yeah, let me see if you can see me. Yeah, and then I'm going to change it a little when I'm going into the poses. Thank you, Eli. All right. So you can close your eyes whenever you like. Make yourself comfortable. Make your body comfortable. And you can sit or you can lie down. Make sure if you're lying down that you don't fall asleep. <laughs> so take some extra concentration. So just as long as your spine is straight and long, it's all fine how the, the legs are. You don't have to sit in easy pose. You can also have your legs straight forward or at a chair. That's also fine. And relax your belly. Relax your chest, your heart, your shoulders, your jaw, your forehead. And the upper part of your head. And feel your sitting bones on the chair. or at the ground, the floor, the cushion that you're sitting on. Relax your arms, your fingers. And we're gonna slowly get into it today, this morning. And just breathe. So feel that your breath is coming in and that your breath is leaving the body. And maybe you can feel what your breath does. So if you're breathing in, you're massaging not only, only your lungs, but also your heart, your ribs, your belly, your organs. And when you're breathing out, you're relaxing. And if you're out breath is a little longer than your in breath. You're going to activate your parasympathetic nervous system. Yeah, some of the teachers and also in the anatomy classes, we're talking about that parasympathetic nervous system. It's a whole word. So you're activating your relaxation. So yes, we're starting the day, but we're starting the day relaxed. Good. And keep breathing. Hmm. 
So fill your whole body with prana, with life energy, with chi. When you're breathing in and when you're breathing out, you let the apana, all the waste come out. So it can be waste from the body, but it can also be emotional waste or mental waste. Things you say to yourself, things that other people said to you and you internalized. Just breathe it out. Good. Hmm. And slowly bring your hands together. Feel your thumbs in front of your heart, and your fingers pointing upward or to your chin. And set an intention for yourself for this morning, for this day. And maybe, good morning, Rita. Welcome. Hi. Sorry, I didn't uh, know it was a Zoom. I was just watching you live on Facebook. It's all right, sweetie. I can hear you. Happy now. you're here. Oh, great. Thank you. <laughs> so we're going to set an intention now for today. And maybe it's the same intention as you had yesterday. Maybe it changed during the day yesterday, or maybe it changed during the night. So what is it you need? What did your body say yesterday after all the classes, after all the zoom calls the computer watching the computer good i'm gonna put your mic off rita so you can meditate oh, sorry no, that's all right i'm gonna do that that's all right no worries no worries yeah so Connect with your intention. And just repeat it for yourself, maybe out loud in the room, there's nobody maybe near or in Robin's case, just whisper it to yourself or in your mind and repeat it three times. So you give it a little bit of power or a lot of power. And bow to your intention. So bring your chin to your chest. And slowly open your eyes. And move your body a little bit. Move your legs. Hi, Erica. Good morning. Great that you're here. And we're going to do the first pose. So this class is really going to be about uh, just doing yin yoga. You know, tomorrow we're going to uh, jump more into it. But now we're just going to experience the yin yoga. So maybe some of you did yin yoga before. Maybe some of you, it's the first time. So that's why I want to do it like this. Put your feet together and make sure they're touching. And what I prefer, what I like is to be on a bolster or on a cushion so I can tilt my pelvis a little forward so my spine will stay long in the beginning. And then you just breathe in and bring yourself forward. And you can decide if your heels are really close by, if they're really close to your pelvis or if they're further away. And sometimes people say it's a diamond shape that you make with your legs. So it's a, your, your feet are a little bit further away. And just bring yourself down into the pose. Yeah. So with your lower leg, your lower back, your middle back, and your upper back and your neck. And see for yourself if you if you like to bend your head also, if it's or if it's too much. If it's too much, just keep your head up. 
maybe support your head with your hands. And maybe you need a block or a book so you can put your arms on the blocks. You can support yourself, support your head. So really take time to come into the pose. I mostly tell people just to take a minute or so to come into the pose. So they're feeling where, where it works for them. And we're gonna stay here in this pose for about two or three minutes. And like I said in the beginning, it's really good to do yin yoga in the morning because your fascia, your connective tissue is still cold. Your muscles are also still cold, but your fascia is really cold. So you can, and your muscles are cold. So you can really get into those blockages, the things that you, the things that you, yeah, that happen in your life, either emotionally or physically or mentally. They have a tendency to get stuck in the body. And yin yoga is just perfect for, for letting those traumas go. Yeah. <laughs> so breathe into the pose. And where you wanna feel it. So in yin yoga we say target areas. So where you wanna feel it is in your lower back, in your SI joint, in your glutes, and maybe you saw it on the anatomy class where the glutes are, and if you don't, then I'm gonna tell you. And the glutes are the muscles and the fascia that from your bum up to your upper leg. So the side, it's on the side here. Yeah. And what you wanna do and what you wanna feel is a burning sensation. So you can feel those blockages leaving your body so make sure you're breathing well you exhaling yeah good and try to remain calm and try to remain still in the pose so it works you have the most benefits from this pose when you totally uh, when you become quiet yeah good <laughs> Good, Gigi. Beautiful, Rita. Yeah. Rhonda, are you doing well? Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> good. So bring yourself down and not by pulling on your feet, but just by breathing. So your breath is helping you to come further and deeper into the pose. <sighs> so you can feel the resistance in your body. You can let the resistance go. If you feel like a stinging sensation, we call it red pain. You don't want to go there. So if it's not good for your knees or for your lower back, just go a little bit out of the pose or change your pose. I can help you with that. And let yourself go deeper into the pose. And there's half a minute left. For the last three breaths, we're going to do the ha breath. It's also in the manual under the pranayamas. It's the last one. And we do that to, to let the apana go. So we're going to take an in breath and a big out breath with ha. Very good. Another one. Breathe in and out. 
Good. Last one. Breathe in. And out. And now to come out of the pose, slowly bring your hands to the ground and bring yourself up. Bring your hands underneath your knees and bring your knees together. And then slowly come lying down on your mat, on the ground. And if you, if you feel like it's too heavy for your back to lie completely flat, then you uh, bend your knees, put your feet on the mat. And it can feel like as if you became five years older. Good, that's the sensation you want. Hi, Erica, nice to see you. Yay, it's working. Good that you're here. <laughs> so you can lie down on your back. And this is called a counter pose. So after every pose, you wanna do a counter pose to relax, to also Give yourself time to go inside and look what you changed, what happened. Good. So relax your body. And see if you can really relax yourself, like fully no standby, no just in case, just fully relax. I'm always inspired by cats. They're like really active and they can really relax when they're relaxing. <laughs> And slowly roll to the side and bring yourself to a tabletop and a knee pose. Make sure your knees are okay. Put something underneath your knees if it's hurtful. And we're going to do the Anahatasana. So the Anahata is a Sanskrit word for your heart. So the heart posture, asana. So slowly bring your hands forward. You're gonna bring yourself down. And one thing that you have to make sure of is that, that your hips are above your knees. Because if your hips are going too far forward, it's gonna be really heavy for your shoulders. If it's too far back, then maybe you don't feel enough. But it's also nice to do it if it's too much. Then you bring your hips back, but never too far forward. Well, never, but but <laughs> to start <laughs> and bring your forehead on the mat. Maybe you need something to help you with that. Maybe a blanket or a cushion. And breathe. And also for this pose, take a minute to come into the pose to really feel what you need, what sort of support you need. Yeah, so in yin yoga, there are a lot of props that we use, but you can also do it propless. And you can feel it in your shoulders if they're really tight. You can feel it in your lower back if, if your lower back is tight as well. Maybe you can feel it in your bum, maybe on the sides, your obliques. And breathe. And bring your heart to the ground. So with every breath, every out breath, you're bringing your heart more and more to the ground. Opening up, opening up for this beautiful day that you're gonna have. With Saha, with yourself, with your intention. Ah. <sighs> So let yourself get into the pose deeper and deeper by using your breath. And 
And when it's enough, it's enough. Then you just bring your uh, sitting bones back to your heels. So you can always stop the pose if it's enough. If you reached, if you reached it, if you reach your goal in this pose. And just one more minute. So make sure you're still okay to stay in the pose for one more minute. If not, you slowly bring your sitting bones back to your heels and come into child pose. Good. For the last three breaths, just breathe in and breathe out, everything out. Everything that's on your heart, everything that's aching, everything that's hurtful, just let it go. Breathe in. Let all the apana out. Last one, last breath in this pose, breathe in. And breathe out. And as you breathe out, you slowly bring your sitting bones towards your heels. If it's not possible for your knees, you just come to the front and you just lie on your belly. That's also fun. Yeah, maybe it's enough for your knees already this pose and just come to your belly. Mm, good. Looks really good. Mm, to you. If you're lying on your belly, feel the connection with the earth. Feel the connection of your belly, your heart with the earth. And let everything that is in your belly that is not serving you anymore. Anger, impatience, frustration, let it all go. Good. Mm. So with every pose, we're getting more and more relaxed, more and more into the body. <laughs> Slowly come out of the pose. Come to tabletop again. We're going to go to swan. Make sure you're, we're gonna start with the right leg. So make sure your left leg is okay. So maybe you can bring a cushion or a blanket underneath your left knee. I'm always, I usually walk my hands a little bit further. So they're not stacked under my shoulder, but just a little bit further. And then I'm going to bring my right knee to my right wrist. And I walk my right foot a little forward, just as far as it's possible. If it's not possible for your knee and your hips, I'm gonna tell you a different pose as well. And bring your left knee back to bring yourself into swan. In the yang yoga, this one's called pigeon. And in the yin yoga, this one's called swan. If you have a bolster or a cushion, you can bring it here forward if you, if you like. And then fold yourself forward to bring yourself onto the cushion. Yeah. Yeah, good. If it's not possible for your knee, then you come to your back. 
and bring your right heel to your left knee and slowly bring your left leg up and your hands this one's called eye of the needle so you bring your hands uh, on your upper leg or at your shins of your left leg so you have the same target area so the target area are the glutes again it's the side of your bum and your upper leg so if it's, this is working for you, then this is working for you. And if you like the swan, just go into the swan. Good. Are you okay, Gigi? <laughs> cool. <laughs> Good. Let me see if you're all right. Yeah. Good. You're all right, Erica. Yeah. Looks good. Perfect. You, Rita? Yeah. You can also bring something under your right bum if it's not possible to fully come to the ground. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Perfect. And bring yourself down into the pose. Maybe your kids, in Erica's case, will help you bring you to the ground. <laughs> yeah. Lovely. And breathe. So there's a lot of compression in your right um, groin. Sorry, I have to figure that word out. <laughs> your right groin. Maybe in your lower back as well, your SI joints. So where the sacrum and the ilium, your hips come together. Hmm. And just breathe. So this pose is a little tougher for your hips, for your lower back. And make space, make space in this one. Maybe you want to stay on your underarms, your lower arms, or maybe you want to come down fully with your forehead on the floor. So just figure it out for yourself. And it's really nice to bring something under your, under your right bum as well. Good. Keep breathing. And make space. And if you feel you're making a little bit more space and you need some extra, you just bring your left leg a little bit more down and your right foot a little bit more to the front. And breathe. So the fascia is it's covering your muscles, your tendons, your ligaments, your organs. The fascia is all over your body. It's like this spider web holding your body together. And it's only till recently that uh, scientists found out how it works. So by giving pressure and time to the fascia, those are the two components, the fascia will open up. And you're going to bring more liquid into the fascia. And that's why you're making space in your body. And it's rejuvenating as well. So yes, we get older, but it's a different way of getting older. It's more preferable. <laughs> Half a minute left. You're doing really well. Mm. 
Well, for this one, because it can heat up the body a little bit, or maybe a lot, because you're opening up your SI joint, and there's a lot of energy there in your roots, in your second chakra as well. So what we're going to do is a lion's breath. And what we're going to do is breathe in, and when we breathe out, you're gonna stick out your tongue, open your eyes as if you're a Maori doing the haka, and then Okay, there we go. Breathe in, and breathe out. Two more times. Breathe in, and breathe out. Last one, breathe in, and breathe out. Then if there's a cushion underneath your red bum, just let go, bring your weight to the right bum. Bring your right leg down and come and lay down on your belly. Good. And if you need another counter pose for yourself, take another counter pose. But this is a really nice one because you're elongating your right leg that was compressed. And you can really feel the prana flowing back into your leg again. Good. Ah. And relax your body. <laughs> so you can lie down with your belly on the ground. Yeah, perfect, Erica. Or maybe the child pose, whatever you prefer. Yeah. Hmm. And breathe. You make sure you're really relaxing. You're surrendering to the floor with your whole body. Hmm. When you're ready, slowly come up. And we're going to the other side. So make sure your right leg is going to be okay. Maybe support it by a blanket. Keep your bolster near or a cushion. Come into a tabletop again. And bring your arms a little bit forward and your left knee to your left wrist and slowly bring your right leg back and down. And make sure your hips are in line. So things that can happen is that you bring yourself to the left more or bring yourself to the right more, but then you're getting, you let it get, get out of the way. You just you want to go straight into it. <laughs> just like you signed up for this Saha yoga teacher training. So dive straight into it. <laughs> no excuses, no sidetracking. So this, pose will help you to stay focused. Maybe bring a bolster underneath your left bum. See if you want to stay up on your lower arms or you can come fully down. Just feel what works for you. Hmm, and relax. Opening up the body in this wonderful morning, day two of your teacher training. It's so special to connect with you to do this.
And breathe. Make sure you're breathing. Make sure you're breathing deep into your belly. Maybe you can feel your belly on your upper leg. Good. And make sure if this pose isn't working for your left knee that you do the eye of the needle. So you come into your onto your back and you bring your left ankle on your right knee. So Rhonda, are you okay with your knees there? I can't see you, just want to make sure you're okay. <laughs> are you okay, Rhonda? Okay, oh yeah, oh, sorry, yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, good. And breathe. So the target area for this pose, or your glutes again, but you can also feel the compression in your left groin. And also it's opening, didn't mention it on the other side, for your hip flexors on the right side in the front where the psoas is at. That's a famous muscle. <laughs> And breathe. Hmm. Last minute, one more minute. So if you feel like pain coming up in this pose, change your pose, come into eye of the needle. Or come out of the pose, that's also fine. So make sure your knees are fine, your lower back is fine. There we go. Breathe in through your mouth, through your nose, sorry. And out with the lion's breath. Breathe in. Everything out. Last one, breathe in. And out. Good. And bring yourself to your left. Bring your legs to the front and come lie down on your back. Maybe bend your knees to support your lower back. Maybe bring the bolster underneath your knees so you don't have to Work that hard. Or maybe totally flat on the ground, on your back. Feel what's good. I feel the swan. We did both ways. It's a really good pose, a really nice pose. To open up, to open up your hips, your lower back. Hmm. So especially people with lower back problems, it's really good to do this pose. To get the energy flowing again, so that it don't get stuck in the lower parts of your back. So you're, you're gonna be capable of using the energy for your whole body, for your whole life. So this is also, uh, people that have lower back issues. It's also because of the suppressing, suppressing of energies, not allowing yourself to be. When it didn't start with you, it start, started with parents, it started with teachers at schools, it started with government, that you were not allowed to be who you wanted to be. 
So get those lower backs free again to feel the energy flowing to become one with yourself and with everyone else. Sounds really easy. Quite take some time, so don't worry about it. And the last pose that we're going to do is a happy baby. So we're going to start happy. <laughs> Maybe you can grab your strap if you have one, or use a blanket or a sweater. Maybe it's maybe it's not necessary, but just maybe you're gonna like it. So bring yourself to your back if you're not already are, and bend your knees, bring them up to your chest, and your hands are on your knees. And then you're gonna bring your hands uh, in the huh, I don't know how to say that word. <laughs> I'm gonna look that up <laughs> at the back of your knees. You're gonna. Put them in the back of your knees. Then you're gonna point your feet upward to the ceiling. And you're gonna bring your knees a little bit out and down to the ground. Yeah, good. You can stay here with your hands if you like. But if there's more space and you want to experience more, you can grab your ankles or you can grab the soles of your feet. If it's really impossible to grab anything and it's too hard for your shoulders, you can also use the wall. So you do a happy baby like this. And if you bring your hips close to the wall, then it gets more, uh, you can feel the pose more and better. It works better for you. So see how your happy baby looks. And if you want to use the strap, you can use the strap. So what you do is you bring the strap underneath the soles of your feet. So you can relax your shoulders more. Just grab the strap and relax. And open up. And this is a pose that where people have to feel safe in the space where you're at. Because you're really opening up while well, you understand you're experiencing it right now. Good. And make sure your feet are apart. So they're, yeah. So Rita, make, your, make sure your feet are more, more apart, more than this. Yeah. Good. Yeah, so your knees are, yeah, beautiful, Erica. Your knees are going to your armpits, as if your knees are going to your armpits. Yeah, and you keep your heels and your feet in the same line as your knees. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, good, Rita, <laughs> beautiful. You have the space, so go for it, yeah. Yeah, beautiful, Gigi, that's it. Looks really good. And breathe. We're gonna not we're not gonna stay this long in this pose. So you can feel your groins again. You're gonna feel your hamstrings, so at the at the back of your legs. Maybe you're feeling your adductors in the, the inside of your of your legs. And this will get you warmed up. Maybe you can feel it in your lower back. One more minute. I'm going to stay in this pose for one more minute. Keep breathing. Make yourself still. Don't move. Try not to move in the pose. Try to deepening the pose by your by breathing. Beautiful. Mm. 
Make sure your neck is long. Your chin is a little bit towards your chest, or just a little. There we go. Last three breaths. Breathe in. And long out. Make all the sounds you want. Breathe in. And breathe out. Last one. Breathe in. And breathe out. Slowly bring your legs to the ground again, your soles of your feet to the ground. And keep the soles of your feet there. Let your knees fall in, in the, let them touch each other. This one's called tipi pose. You're making a tipi with your, with your legs and your feet. We give some space to your lower back. Your lumbar spine. Good. And whenever you're ready, make yourself ready for Savasana. For the last pose. So you can bring yourself to the back of your body. Mm, good. If you want to keep your knees bent, that's also fine. Maybe you can bring a cushion underneath your knees. If you want to put the music on, I also put the Shivasana music in there. It's a really beautiful Dutch pianist. He's a minimalist. With a song called Reflection. His name is Yup Bathing. And bathing is like moving, like earthquake. So. <laughs> Make sure you relax. So relax your jaw, relax your arms, your back, your hips, your legs, your knees, your feet. Ah, you did it. You woke up. You were disciplined enough to come. Well, Rita was maybe was already up. <laughs> hmm. And relax yourself. Ah. <sighs> So make sure your body's still. Only the breath is moving in your body. Relax your arms, your fingers. Relax your thoughts, your feelings. Don't worry about the rest of the day. You'll be doing fine. Just stay in the moment. Stay in this moment. It's beautiful yin yoga practice. It helps you to relax more, to feel more. So especially when people lost their connection with their body or parts of their body, this is a really amazing practice. So you can reconnect again with those parts that you don't want to be in. You reconnect with the whole body. Because it's so slow, there's so much time to feel the body. That's why it's so good for those people. And also people with injuries 
just perfect to feel what happened there. Hmm. So relax yourself. Ah, you're such a beautiful being. It's so important that you're doing this for yourself and for your whole community. Whether you're going to be a teacher or not, you're going to radiate. You're going to radiate all the light, the love that you're refinding again inside of yourself. Hmm. And slowly start moving your body again. So wiggle your toes, your feet, your ankles, your fingers, your hands, your wrists your knees, your hips, your elbows, your shoulders, your hips, your pelvis, your whole spine, and maybe your neck by bringing your head from left to right, but just slowly, it's early. <laughs> and slowly bring yourself up into a seated position so we can and this class together, whether you're on Facebook or on Zoom. Hmm. Hmm. You can close your eyes again. Feel your spine. Hmm. Your soft belly your open heart, your strong spine. Hmm. And bring your hands together, your thumbs as close as possible to your heart. Repeat your intention for today just three times for yourself, in your mind, as an affirmation, as a reminder for all of your cells in your body. They love to hear it again. And make a big bow for yourself, what you're doing. And slowly come up, open your eyes, and namaste, mahalo, aho. Thank you for joining me this morning. Thank you for being together. Have a wonderful, wonderful day today with Saha. Tomorrow we're going to have a longer period of time, so I'm going to explain some more, but we're only also going to do it on a physical way. I... You can look in the manual from Saha at the yin yoga part. You can study it, but you can also just read it a little. So I'm going to explain more about that. And this is one of my favorite, but I'm going to put it in the Facebook group as well. Maybe Eli also already mentioned it. It's the Bernie Clark book from yin yoga and it has everything. So it, this is like the yin yoga Bible <laughs> also for the Facebook but I'm going to post it so don't you don't have to write it down. So you're going to see all the poses are in here, all the meridians, even sequences, so all the joints, all the, so this is a great book, but I'm going to talk about it tomorrow. So enjoy the class with Iris. Have a little break, go to the toilet, drink lots of water, like Eli said, and thank you so much. Thank you that I, that this is possible to connect like this. So thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Bye.
You're very welcome. <laughs>